So you may be wondering what's going on right now. Um, <laughs> I This battle was a little weird. Uh, you may see a Pokemon and hear me complain about a Pokemon that is not on his roster. I may have already done that. I don't actually know where I'm putting this in the video yet. But that's because that Pokemon isn't on his roster. And it's not in the transactions. I thought it was. Throughout this battle, you'll see that I think it's on the dock or something and I just missed it or it's in a transaction that wasn't updated on the dock. Um, should I have told my opponent about it in advance? Probably, but it's happened before where I didn't know about Amon. Turns out it's not on his team. And I did not prep for it, which means I did not speed creep, which means I did not know. And that does end up making a difference in this game. So bear that in mind. Um, I will post at the end what the final result was, but just bear in mind that throughout this game, I complained a little bit about Amon, and it's honestly not on his roster. Uh, and that's a problem for me. So I, w I will try not to complain in the future as much. I was watching this footage back and I was like, wow, I'm super whiny about it. Uh, so just bear that in mind and I'll see you guys back here at the end of the game. Hello everyone and welcome to the New York Empoleons week two battle of the PCL. We are here this week taking on WOS22, coach of the Philadelphia Fan Peas. And uh, this is going to be a really fun battle. I am super excited. I have no idea how my team's going to perform. If you haven't seen what my sets are and why this battle is going to be really, really interesting, uh, definitely go check out the team builder. Because if you just checked really quickly when I saw when you saw my team show up, you'll know there's some fun tech coming up this week. And I don't know if it's going to work, but we're going to give it a shot. Anyway, I am not going to delay his him any longer. We are going to jump right into this. His team is absolutely horrifying. So... I'm expecting myself to, to groan the second I see it. And there's the Clefairy. He doesn't bring either of his Intimidators. Oh no, wait a minute. He has Serena? I didn't prep for Serena. I didn't even know he had Serena. Okay, um, that's interesting. I don't know when that was updated or if the dock got updated or I didn't check it. But uh, here we are. So we're going to deal with the Serena. I think I have things that can handle it. I just wasn't prepared for it. Uh, that's That happens. That's life. Uh, and he does have the Clefairy. He doesn't bring either of his Intimidators. I'm so sad he didn't bring his Intimidators. My team was so ready for the Intimidators, but, uh, you know, that's life. Um, so let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, Scizor looks like a really solid lead. I don't think he leads with the Dragapult. And, uh, I think Scizor just does a lot of work in the early game against his roster. Uh, I can just go for a U-turn. It's so free. And then uh, the G-Max Norlax is a little bit of a nuisance here. But, you know, we've got answers to it. And um, I think we can handle the Dragapult. That's really the one thing that, like, I need to handle the Dragapult. And once that's handled, we can we can move on with our lives. But until that time, that's going to be a, a huge problem. So good luck to my opponent. Hopefully this isn't super loud. I'm actually going to turn it down a little bit. I know it's been loud historically. That might have been too far. So we're going to do that. So sorry if the audio does a weird thing. He does actually lead with that Dragapult. Um, do I think he's going to have the Flamethrower? And do I think he's going to stay in on the possible Banded Bullet Punch? That doesn't kill a Dragapult. Without Flamethrower, he doesn't kill me, but he does kill me with the Flamethrower. It's not what I wanted him to lead with at all. I could go Rotom and just kind of scout out what set he is. I don't want to. I don't want to lose this thing. I'm going to be honest. I really don't think that's a good idea. I'm just going to go Rotom here. Uh, scout out what he wants to do. I don't trust. I don't trust my matchup against Dragon Ball. He may U-turn, and that would make me feel really bad because I would love to have been in against this thing on the U-turn. But there's the flamethrower, and I wasn't wasn't really willing to take the chance. He wasn't going to tech the flamethrower for that Scizor, as the Rotom is going to come in here, and it's not going to show anything about its set too much. Uh, too much obviously. That was redundant. Um, so the Lantern could easily come in here. I, I actually sort of expect it to. Um, I expect it to be the Volt Absorb set. I'm just going to go for a Shadow Ball. I'm not going to reveal too much. Uh, in case he wants to stay in. He knows I'm not Scarfed, so he knows he can stay in if he wants to. Um, maybe if he sets up like a Dragon Dance or something crazy. Uh, but he's going to switch out. Probably the Lantern. And if he goes Lantern, then I have a, I have an idea of the way of his, his play style here. It's going to be very safe. Um, I want to get a scout on how much damage this does. How especially defensive are you right now? Um, and this looks like fairly specially defensive, and it's probably, it's not leftovers, or at least it doesn't outspeed the Rotom if it is leftovers. Um, it's not leftovers, so possibly AV, um, 
which is good for me to know. He may Volt Switch. He may Toxic, but if he's AV, he's not going to be able to Toxic, obviously. Uh, Scald is also somewhat free. I could just go out into my uh, Hatterene here as an option. I could just stay in and go for the Nasty Plot. I think I'm just going to Nasty Plot here. I don't know what you want to do, um, but I don't think you can actually touch me. Uh, Toxic would be the worst case scenario. I don't know what item he is, though. Maybe Shuka. Uh, there's the Scald. And Scald's not going to do very much. And no burn means we get the leftovers recovery. So now the Rotom's at plus two. Uh, and we can actually just go for another one, potentially, if we want to. Uh, although the Dragapult, once I get weakened enough, the Dragapult threatens me, like, a lot. But I feel like I kind of want to go for another one. Uh... It still won't take out... No, it won't even take out the Lantern at, at plus four. So there's no reason for me to click it again. I just want to see if I can do... Uh, if this is a 2 at KO from here. It's not quite a 2 at KO, and he goes for the Volt Switch. So getting a lot of damage off on that, which is super nice. Um, and that puts me in a much worse position to take a hit from the only thing that he wants to go into right now, which is the Dragapult. Since he knows that I'm outspeeding the Lantern, his Serena's not safe. Um, Clefairy can't have Unaware. It can only be Magic Guard. Um... So, wow, unless he's maybe Scarfed, uh, or AV or something, I mean, I am running a, not a super fast Rotom, but not a slow Rotom. I didn't prep it around a Serena's speed tier, is the only thing. Um, and if he's Assault Vest, Serena, which is a pretty standard Serena set, uh... I'm doing like 70% with a Shadow Ball. I kind of just want to. I'm just going to click Bolt Switch here. Um, there's the Seed Bomb. I don't know if you're Scarfed. I didn't prep it to outspeed a Serena, which is. Second time this has happened in Austin's League. Why is it that always that whenever I'm in Austin's League, there's a Mon I'm literally not even prepped for? I'm just going to go out into my Scizor here. U turn is super free. Um, I have no. There's no downside to it. Um, at all. He could drop kick or he could go for like a high jump kick or something, but um, I'll live it and I can just go for the U-turn. Uh, that potentially will kill the Serena and if he goes out into anything else, it's just a free U-turn and I get to scout. Again, I don't necessarily mind taking a little bit of chip damage from the Ferrothorn. Um, get a scout on whether or not you're a physical or special set. That is sort of one thing I need to know. Uh, and that is a good amount of damage. We do see the Iron Barbs we do not see the Rocky Helmet, and uh, looks like that is a physically defensive Ferrothorn of to some to some degree, um, and this allows me to go out into the Salazzle here, go for the Nasty Plot if I want to. Pult still a problem. There's leftovers. Okay. Um, Pult still a problem if I. So I know he's not Akka. Um, I kind of want to plot here, but I think Flamethrower is just a safer play. I don't need to plot right now. Um, he could go Lantern, though. Lantern would be a safe pivot here. Um, although Sludge Wave could potentially kill, although he, I think he's more especially defensive. I'm just going to plot. Um, he may like Leech Seed if he's really, really ballsy and wants his Ferrothorn to to stay in right now um but wait did i forget to change my set oh my god okay so this is a i'm a little confused about what set i'm running with this salazzle it might be it very well might be adamant max attack with nasty plot because i forgot to change the evs um <laughs> gmax snorlax is here we are totally fine with that we're just gonna click sludge waves uh no no deny, no doubt in my mind that that's the button to click here. Um, and Snorlax, it can't set up curses. It could EQ or something crazy here, but uh, I'd rather, I'd rather just go for the Sludge Wave. Um, scout out how much this is gonna do. If he G maxes, we're wasting turns, I guess. Um, and I still have my Rhyperior in the back to stop a Curse Lack, so. He is going to G-Max straight away, um, which is fine. Again, my Rhyperior is designed to beat this, and my Salazzle, it looks like, is actually minus special attack nature. Whoops. Um, that's okay. We're going to do roughly 10% here, given the, the Dynamax. Uh, 
and maybe poison? Poison would be cool. Uh, oh, that's a lot of damage. And we get the poison. Wow. Wow, Salazzle. Uh, I don't even know. I don't actually remember if G-Max Replenish gets rid of status. Uh, that just kills me. Um, it doesn't get rid of status. Wow, that's huge. Okay, cool. So, G-Max, Snorlax, kills Salazzle with G-Max Replenish. Okay, and we're going to go out into my Rhyperior. We are going to go for a Curse. Um... And we are just going to keep this thing at bay until such a time as it's no longer gigantic. And we can do a lot of damage with the body press. So, uh, Curse is going to come out here. He may go for, like, a G-Max. I'm not even sure. Uh, like, a like Max Quake would be not unexpected uh, in this case. Max Knuckle. Okay. Uh, it does, like, literally nothing. He's going to get plus one attack, but I'm going to stay. I, I might be slower now. But, so we might get another max knuckle off that does that much damage. Um, but we are gonna we are gonna pop our leftovers here and uh, see this thing take a little bit more chip damage on that end. Um, and I'm just gonna curse one more time. Let him get small. Not worry about it. Uh, max hailstorm. Is that ice punch or is that like ice beam? Looks like maybe like ice beam. Um, he sets up the hail, which is going to chip him down as much as it's going to chip me down. We don't see leftovers on him. I'm not sure what item he is. Uh, but I'm just going to curse again. Um, and we're going to scout out this. We know he outspeeds now. I don't know what move that was. Um, but hail's going to gonna come out. Um, should live another hit no matter what. And be able to go for body press here and take out the Snorlax. And not have to stress about it. Um, obviously the lantern threatens me out at that point, but I think this thing did what it needed to do, which was to stop the Snorlax from sweeping me, and I still have access to the Hatterene's G-Max for later in the game with the Trick Room aspect to it, uh, which can still do a ton of work. So uh, I would love if he just hands me the Snorlax. He may. Um, and it is Ice Punch. Okay, so... And uh, we are going to go for that Body Press here, which should just take out the Snorlax from that range. Uh, so Rhyperior kills Snorlax, G-Max, Snorlax with Body Press. And I forget what killed Rotom. What killed Rotom? The Serena that I wasn't prepared for? Uh, okay. So he goes into the Lantern here, which is a nuisance, but it's okay. Um, I think let this thing go down. And then, uh, if he overpredicts, he doesn't overpredict. He's, he's not overpredicting at all. But I can go to my Hatterene at this point. Um, and we can start getting kills with that. As the hail comes out. Since he has Pharaoh around, but I'm just going to go for the Max Psychic to stop any priority moves. Um, once I go for the Trick Room. And I do want to go for the Trick Room here as a lantern kills uh Rhyperior with scald and we are going to be able to set up the trick room he goes for the scald again just no burn just no burn just no burn one time one time one time one time it's fine it's not a huge deal that i got burned uh we are going to be able to, to set up the trick room anyway and it's just a little bit of extra chip damage which i didn't want to take but isn't the end of the world um now, Max Psychic seems like the freest move, um, since it is going to be able to set up the terrain here, um, and or I could just go for the I could go for the Max Flare to stop the Hail Chip, but I think Max Mindstorm stopping the the priority from the Dragapult, um, so that my Trick Room actually gives me as much benefit as possible. We know he's not um, Room Service Ferrothorn, so we know we underspeed him. We have the Max Flare. He's been chipped by the the Scizor to the point where he's in range. Um, now, this is a little bit dangerous because of the fact that my Scizor definitely wants to spam Bullet Punch at the end of this game. Uh, that is still a huge win con for me. Um, if I can get just a little bit of chip damage on the, the Dragapult. Uh, so I'm just going to hopefully survive long enough uh, 
to stall out that Psychic Terrain as well, but kills Lantern with Max Mindstorm. Um, the Hail stops. A little bit of burn chip damage here, um, which that's okay. Ferrothorn comes in. It dies. Clefairy can probably take one hit, although the Max Psychic in Psychic Terrain is going to do a lot of damage to everything on his entire roster, which is why I wanted to set that up. The Pharaoh is the only thing that resists, and it doesn't like it. And Dragapult, which uh, can come in, can definitely, uh, can't definitely take a max um, fairy. Now, he could have Protect, um, but he's not Akaberry. So there's the Protect. That's not a huge deal. It stalls out the extra one turn, um, since he probably lives this now. But uh, we do have the max flare for the Pharaoh. And it does live on a little bit, so he is going to be able to stall out the third turn um, here. But at this point, there's no there's no reason not to go for another Max Flare. He could protect again, and I don't want to let him live an extra turn. So I'm going to go for another Max Flare. If he goes Dragapult, I still have the extra one turn of Trick Room. Um, I am If he's not Specs, which I didn't scout on the Rotom set, if he was Specs Dragapult or not, he very well may be. But again, my win condition here is the same. Uh, once this thing goes down, it is spam bullet punch with Scizor until Kingdom Come, honestly. It's like, that's that's the one thing I gotta do. So G-Max, Hatterene, kills Ferrothorn with Max Flare. And um, so we did see the Protect. Just wanna write down all my notes. Um, now, one more Mon dies. Or gets huge chipped here. Um, I have the, the Psychic Terrain up, so I'm going to go for the Psychic here. Um, because it does more than the Dazzling Gleam at this point. Although the Max Flare may actually do more, or the, the Mystical Fire may do more than Psychic, but I doubt it. I doubt it does. Um, I could have calced it. I didn't calc it. I went with my gut here. <laughs> it's a really, really safe thing to do, right? Um, and again, Scizor comes in, goes for the U-turn once, goes into the Urshifu, and then... We have, to, we have to rely on Scizor being able to kill the Dragapult. Uh, that's really the only thing going here for us. Um, we're going to go for the Psychic. Maybe should have gone for the Mystical Fire here. Um, that's probably Assault Vested, as he is going to live. And he's going to go for the Seed Bomb. Again, I did not know he had a Serena. Uh, which makes this a very difficult thing to prep for. So, actually, Lantern gets the kill with the Burn. Uh... That's like, I don't know what to do about that, guys. I don't, I don't know whether I should have, should have prepped differently, should have expected something else. Like, I'm not sure. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna go out into the Urshifu at this point. I'm gonna go for the Poison Jab. I lose nothing by doing it. Uh, if he goes hard Clefairy to keep the Serena around for the Queenly Majesty for the Banded Scizor's Bullet Punch, that's a great play, uh, and is why I have to go for the Poison Jab here in case he goes Clefairy and does decide to make that play. It will also kill the Serena if he does leave it in at this point. Um, but when you don't prep for your opponent's team as it's as it is... Oh, it is Scarfed. Okay. Uh, that's going to do decent damage. Not going to kill me. Uh, so we're going to go for that Poison Jab. And Urshifu kills Serena with Poison Jab. Uh, as the Mystic, Misty Terrain goes away... Um, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be quite an end game here. I'm not actually sure, or the Psychic Terrain, or whatever that was. Uh, he's he doesn't want to go Dragapult because if I have the Sucker Punch, really, really, because if I had Sucker Punch, man, I mean I'm going to Wicked Blow, obviously. But I guess with the Sun Up, the Flamethrower, if he Specs, does enough from here. He's definitely Specs. Man, imagine if I had prepped for Serena, guys. Imagine if I had prepped for Serena. Um, Alright, I'm looking for a crit. I'm looking for a crit bullet punch. Uh, I don't... I, uh, this is the second time a doc not being updated when I actually started prepping for my team. My opponent has literally cost me a game and it's incredibly frustrating because again if you don't prep for the team you will not beat the team that is always true uh 
nothing I can do about it. I didn't I didn't see Serena on his roster. You can see in my team builder yesterday that there's no Serena. I don't know what he traded for it. Uh, I'm literally going to go look right now and see when that transaction was made. Because I'm confused. I mean, great game. He played super well. I don't see Serena on his roster or on his trades and transactions. And let me see the doc. Um, I just assume that I didn't check something when that happens, but I don't see in the in the chat that he had a Serena. And did I copy the wrong team? All the other mons were right. All right. So as you guys may have seen, the result of the battle didn't go my way. As soon as it was over, I checked. And it turns out, like I said at the beginning, that mon, uh, Serena, is not on his roster. So uh, I talked to Austin. I talked to my opponent. And it was decided that this will actually go as a 3-0 forfeit win for me. But I wanted to upload the video anyway for you all to see it uh, and understand you know, kind of what I was doing and, and why this week happened the way it did. So I do end up picking up the 3-0 win by forfeit this week. Uh, so I am 2-0 right now, um, despite losing the battle objectively. Uh, but that's the way that this goes. Hopefully it doesn't happen again in the future. Um, bringing the wrong Mon was apparently a 3-0 forfeit loss if you, if you do it. Uh, again, my opponent, and rightfully so, said, why didn't you tell me at the beginning when we could have just changed the Mon and, and started at that point? I said it in my video, which he obviously wasn't watching, and I just didn't think to tell him because I just assumed that I was in the wrong here, and in the future, I will make sure to tell my opponent that in advance as opposed to waiting until the end, just to double check, you know, just to say, hey, just making sure you have this mod on your roster, uh, just to, before the game starts so that if they can change it, I have no problem with them seeing like which six mods I'm bringing and then changing one mod out for another mod on their roster. Uh, usually they're going to bring a mod that's like not optimized, optimized. Uh, optimized anyway just because like it's what they've got in their box it's what i would do so in the future i will do that i apologize that's the way this is going to get resolved hopefully you guys aren't too mad about it uh please don't be mean or mad to anybody involved mistakes happen i don't gen i genuinely don't think this was to gain an advantage and if he was doing it to gain an advantage it didn't work because i ended up getting the win where he actually beat me so uh that's life that's how this week goes great game to my opponent and i will see you guys back here next week so bye everybody